Hi, this is Hashtag Harry here at the Gfinity Arena and I'm here to show you the best tips and tricks on how to get started on FIFA 19 and show you the best tactics in game to also be good at the game. So here on your screen now is my team and although I appreciate not every person in the world can afford to get this team to start of FIFA, it's just worth mentioning that the first three players I bought were, it was R9 Ronaldo, which is probably the best attacker on the game. We've got Hully, who's definitely the best midfielder on the game, as, as even in the Gfinity Elite Series on the draft pick, I think we spent around a quarter or a third of our budget, maybe even more, on just this one player. So that proves how vital that one player is who can essentially like run a game of FIFA. So that's why I got him. And I think my third signing was... Sergio Ramos. So it's always important to have that spine of your team. You need one amazing centre-back who's going to stop goals. You need one centre-mid who's going to effectively run your game. And you're going to need that attacker to get your goals to win games. As goals are the most important thing in FIFA. But obviously for 99% of the FIFA world, only 1% of us are pros and have to put our blood, sweat, tears and money into the game. There's also a cheaper alternative. A, let's say, a 100k Premier League team. So now I'm going to take you through an affordable team, a team that everyone should realistically be able to afford within, say, one or two weeks of FIFA 19. So first you obviously need to get your best way of getting coins. So one key trick is usually people forget about this, but you get like EA coins that are accumulated over like numerous FIFA since like FIFA 10 or 11, and that involves going to the catalogue and getting these coin boosts where you get like 1,000 coins per game when you start. And you can maybe do that for a maximum 70 games, which is what, like, for a casual player, like five days of FIFA. So you should realistically have 100k by your first week of FIFA. If not, you're doing something wrong. And people are obviously going to be playing rivals, which for this year is very good for rewards, as you get weekly rewards like Foot Champions last year, but on a much smaller scale. And it's easier to manage during the week for the casuals. So on the screen now is the team that I've picked. If I was starting FIFA and I had 100k at the start, so obviously we have to have Jordan Pickford in net because, I mean, get the rave on. Is, is there a better keeping world football? I don't think so. And interestingly, this FIFA, you do actually need to have good kicking stats because even with someone like Courtois, who I had with my Hullet and Vieira team, every time the ball was coming to him under pressure, he would literally just shank it out of play. So I quickly realised that, that I had to get De Gea in. Obviously, he's a bit of a step up from Pickford, but... Yeah, kicking is actually quite important this year, where in other FIFAs, that would be the stat that you tend to overlook when you're picking a keeper. Also, a very key thing with keepers is, is to have the basic chemistry style, as it literally adds plus 10 to every start. So if you've got a keeper that's about 86, 87 rated, you're literally going to max them out straight away. So obviously, to get all them extra 10 boosts, your player needs to be on full chemistry. And as people will know, if you have like one specific league, then it's quite easy to manage as everyone links anyway. So then I think your fullbacks on FIFA is it's quite self-explanatory. You, you just need to have pace there and decent defending because you're going to have a shadow on them this year, which I think would literally take Robinson to 99 pace anyway. It would put his defending at around 90. Bellerin, you probably put something like a Sentinel card on him, which would get his physical up as obviously he doesn't need the pace. And fullbacks, they aren't your most important players on the pitch. So usually just be some sort of preference. Like people would get, Kyle Walker, he might be too expensive this year. Someone like Klein, Seamus Coleman is who I recommend. I've gone with Andy Robertson at left back and there's not too many flexible options in the Premier League this year. I would say if you're going with this team, just just literally just get Robertson. Even, even if you're an Everton fan like me, you're going to have to suck it up and you're just going to have to play him. As our two centre-backs, again, with this sort of team, you, just, you need to prioritise pace a bit. So we've got Davison Sanchez, who literally, I think, a third of the budget has gone on. So we've got that spine again, like I said in my team before, with Ramos, Hullet and R9. In this team, it, I think it's like Sanchez, Dembele and Jesus. We've got we've got a bit more of a rounded off team, but it's it's of that same model. You you need that spine to your team or you're literally going nowhere. So yeah, Sanchez and Baye, 76 and 74 pace. They're both going to get shadows as well, which will take them up to around 90 pace. And they shouldn't be getting beat by even your Ronaldos of this world on the ball this FIFA because yeah, pace doesn't seem to matter as much as previous FIFAs. In midfield, we've got our B-Tech Vieira and Hullet. We've got Fernandinho as my Vieira, who I've kept on a basic chemistry style because you need this player to be a bit well-rounded. Also, we could do with the extra pace, so he gets the plus five sprint speed as well. 
and your CDMs tend to get a forward when you play a 4-2-3-1, but I'm going to get onto that in a minute because I don't actually start with this 4-2-3-1 formation. That gets a bit more complicated. We've got Dembele as my Hullet sort of player. He's got the four-star skill. He's six foot one. He's strong. Look at that dribbling. 89 for someone who's six foot one and that strong. 90 strength is unbelievable. And we put a powerhouse on him, which takes his short pass into, what, 99? He's long pass into 90. He's got 98 stand tackle, 87 interceptions. You probably, your only upgrade on Dembele is probably someone like Hullet, and you're getting him into a 100k team, which is ridiculous. And then our front three behind Gabriel Jesus. For me, this FIFA, four star skills is literally a must. Like, I can't have anyone with three star skills in that attacking third. It's just, it's not an option. You've got skills like the, the Lacroqueta that are, you have to use these skills in the game. And I'm going to be talking more about that in the next video for this one. It's just mainly about the team. So for me, I've gone with Mikatari in the centre attacking mid. And the reason for this is, his defending isn't horrific, so when you switch between formations like you can with custom tactics this year, say you want to go to a 4-1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two, he can slot in centre midfield and he, he won't be leaving like massive gaps. So that's why he's there. Also, these attacking players this year, they have to have four-star weak foot because as people can move the keeper, the meta shot is obviously a finesse, but if they move that keeper to the far post, then you can quickly turn inside and then he'll be shooting on his weak foot near post so that's quite important as you see we've got Mares four star weak foot I think Mikatarian's five and Martial is four okay he's three um we're gonna have to change that oh perfect okay Rashford teammate so I don't know they might have a bust up about that in training but there's only room for one of them has Rashford got four star weak foot that's worth checking yes and he's six foot one I think they're pretty similar this FIFA I didn't actually know Rashford was that good this FIFA because Last year, all the year before, I think Martial was literally my favourite player on the whole game. So, oh yeah, well, Rashford's actually amazing this year. Okay, we're going with Rashford. So for Rashford, because he's starting at left attacking mid, but with a formation change, we'll probably move up front. You still need his passing relatively good, so that's why we're going for a dribbling, shooting and passing, as obviously Marcus Rashford doesn't need pace. And then up front, like I said... Again, in the Premier League this year, you've not got too many options for a 100k team. And Gabriel Jesus, he's, he's good enough anyway. He's got four-star skill with a hunter on it. Takes him to like 96 pace. What is His finishing is like 89, shot power 88. So, yeah, I'd like the Robertson thing. I don't think you've got much flexibility with this. I would just put Gabriel Jesus in this team. But it's well and good having the players this year. But the new custom tactic system of this FIFA... Gives you so much freedom that it can go so good, but it can also go so wrong at the same time. So for me, just to backpedal to the main screen a bit, this screen here is just for chemistry reasons. Chemistry reasons alone. I am never going to use 4-2-3-1 wide in-game, ever. Like this could be a 3-5-2 for formation, a 4-4-2. A the only reason this is on my screen is to get 10 chemistry on each player and then when you change the formation in game your player still keeps it on 10 chemistry so as i go into custom tactics this year i think you're allowed four presets you don't actually need to have your ultra defensive one as your ultra defensive formation or your ultra attacking one as your ultra attacking formation but it makes sense too i mean you're not going to have the attacking one defensive and vice versa so for me i always switch to defensive which will be the formation that i change to at kickoff which is 4 2 3 one, narrow. And what you do to do this, you go to formations, you literally pick your formation, whatever you want it to be, click Y on that, and then move your players around on this screen, and this is obviously where they'll play in game. So it's quite easy to visualise from the original team on this part because it's literally the same formation and the players are coming in. But say if this isn't working, as you can see, I've got the tactics on balance, balance. We don't want to be attacking too much at the start of the game. We don't want to be defending too much at the start of the game. We're just feeling our opponent out at this stage. And maybe if you need like a surge of attack or you just need to sit back a bit, that's where the other tactics come into play. But as we're starting on this one, the defensive style, I think that's one where you can have a bit more leeway at the beginning. You can have maybe drop back or balance. It doesn't seem to be too much of a difference. You can have pressure on heavy touch where they'll only press if your opponent makes a mistake. Which, it sounds like the obvious one to do, but 
on this FIFA, it's where people can trick your players into pressing, then quickly turn out and play. So I just like to be in control of my defense, and that's why it's unbalanced. The width with this formation, you've you've kind of got your wings covered, so you don't need to have it too high, you don't need to have it too low. I just tend to keep it in the middle. Your depth, weirdly, this FIFA, even if you want to press, I would never take it over five depth because your team are just too high up, and it seems like if people come out wide and play the wingers in, it's too easy to, so... I would never go past four in depth, no matter if you're losing the 89th minute. Offensive style. Uh, possession is probably a no-go this year, as on balance, you can still keep possession. Long ball, I don't know what that actually does, to be honest. Fast build-up. This is good when you've got like 20 to 25 minutes left, but before that, for formations like this, it seems like it seems like any formation becomes like a 4-2-4 with fast build-up, so your two centre mids will stay. And my cams will literally all just push to the last line of defence. So, for your width, again, like I said, on this sort of formation, your players aren't starting off too wide or too narrow. So, you don't need to go too wide or too narrow with it. But I like to have some sort of width to get crosses in the box when it's in danger. For your players in box, you definitely don't want this too high as your CDMs will start getting into the box and it'll leave you really exposed in the middle. For corners, it really doesn't need to be any higher than this. If you put it any higher, you're going to be really susceptible to a counter-attack if they win literally the first header from a corner. So I wouldn't take any risks. And for free kicks, I would keep that as maybe even as low as possible as a 10 to always go short from free kicks. But that will also be in another video coming up. For me, it's always important to have two formations that you're familiar with. So if one's not working against a certain player, then you can bring another one into play. And for me... That is 4-1-2-1-2, and like I said, it's why I brought Mkhitaryan into this team. As you can already see, there's a visual difference with my defence. I've got press after possession loss, and I do this because there's a little graphic on, on your screen now which is showing when you lose the ball, your players will literally hound for about five or six seconds. And the problem with this on the previous formation is if that happens and your centre mid goes to press that ball, your whole pitch is open, whereas... In a narrow formation, because they'll do it in a sort of pack, your pitch will never be too open for your opponent really to exploit that. So it's actually a very good way of getting the ball back because your players will hound and they they can't get out. They're in a chokehold. But so we can visualize this formation. Like I said, the reason why I got Mkhitaryan was so we can fill in midfield quite seamlessly. We've got one of the one of the wingers who can play in centre attacking mid comfortably, which is Marius, who's got good passing and dribbling stats. We've got Rashford who I mean, he is technically a striker, but he's a left winger on the game. So he can obviously play up front and the team fits together quite nicely. You can switch between them two familiar formations and you won't see a weak link in your team. So back onto the tactics. It's weird because you would imagine you put your width high for wide formations, but I feel like it's the opposite because if you've got a narrow formation and you put your width high, then your players are going to start covering them spaces that maybe would be left open so that's why I play 4-1-2-1-2 anyway again the depth is literally the max that I would ever put it at the minute offensive style is balanced again because with 4-1-2-1-2 if you, there's no point in playing fast build up you've got you've got enough strikers you've got one center attacking mid essentially three strikers anyway so you don't really need your full backs and center defensive mid trying to bomb on as well you've you've got enough attackers for a FIFA game again like I said width I put that as high so my cent it's more for centre mids more than anything so them centre mids can fill them gaps that would usually be left open and the players in box and corners and free kicks are like before and then just one more thing with your custom tactics obviously you're all you've got your two extremes that you need to go to for your last 10 minutes of a game say say you're one nil down you need to go all gunko we've got four two four constant pressure fast build up players in boxes basically maxed out formations there we've got Rashford Jesus up front Mkhitaryan Mara's why we would have probably brought subs on by that point which is important because players get tired easily on the new patch then obviously you've got the other extreme of that where let's say there's 10 minutes left you're one up and you need to hold on to that lead you need to Mourinho park the bus we've got long ball drop back width yeah that doesn't really matter you don't need to put that short because you don't want to leave the wings open then they can start piling crosses in so leave that as normal your depth, again, you don't want to be inviting them on too much. And long ball, that's literally to just whack to your one striker or two wide people who you could then take the ball into the corner or whatever. So that's arguably the most important thing to 
do this FIFA, set up your custom tactics before the game and be ready for anything that the match can throw at you, whether that's you needing to go all out, part the bus or just start the game and have a plan A and a plan B. But something as important as that is your player instructions because unlike previous years where it doesn't feel like it made that much of a difference, this year they are literally like robots with this stuff. If you stay, if you tell them to stay back, they are staying back. They are going nowhere. So I'm going to take you back to the formation that we start with on the game. For me, your full backs just have to be stay back whilst attacking on this because you've already got your wingers doing you your wing work and it's actually good on FIFA to start attacks with your full back. So if they're back unmarked and you can see the pass to your wingers, it's actually easier to play than if your winger was trying to overlap. You might not have that out ball to start an attack. Now moving on to our CDMs, I think the most important thing with instructions this year is when you start a game, this will be a screen. It'll say defensive position, balanced defense, balanced attack, and cover wing as defensive position. So if you're on this formation, it's a bit different with 4 one 2 one 2 like I'll show you in a sec, but literally you have to put both center defensive mids on cover center. Like you have to manually do this. Or in the game, your midfielders will just be covering the wing. And I don't know why they did that, but yeah, you have to manually change it yourself. I always have cut passing lanes on defensive behavior because if you man mark and your player plays a little through ball in center midfield, he just tends to be like in on the middle of the pitch where if it's cut passing lanes, your players are being a lot smarter out of possession. I will also tend to have the best one out the two as stay back whilst attacking. So in this case, it's Fernandinho. And Dembele has a bit more license to go forward with the ball and join the attack. And then for your three centre attacking mids, this kind of depends on your tactics beforehand. But as I start on balance, I like to have my centre centre attacking mid on stay forward. Most importantly, free roam because, you know, he's that main cog between your midfield and attack. I just want him to do to do what he wants, essentially. Like, it, like if this is Messi, you don't, want to, you don't want to be putting him on a leash. You don't want to be like, do this, do that. You want to be like, Messi, just do what you want, mate. Do what you want. But... This case is Mkhitaryan, not quite messy, but he'll do the job. Then for your wide attacking mids, this kind of depends on your tactics again. On balanced, I won't do this, but when I've got things like fast build-up, etc., I will literally just have my centre attacking mids on stay forward. Because then when you do get the ball with your centre mids, like your transition between midfield and attack is so quick, it's literally impossible for the defender to get back. So say if you don't fancy yourself too much as a FIFA player and just want to get from A to B as quick as possible, I recommend on having these wide attacking midfielders on stay forward and having your defensive on press after possession loss because then the game's doing a bit more for you. It's also very important for me for the wide attacking mids to have get into the box for cross because if you attack down the right, then your left attacking mid will be making them darting runs back post and back post crosses, have they've, they've been a thing on FIFA since FIFA existed. You have to have someone at the back post and even if you don't cross it to them, it's bringing a defender out which enables you to make a pass inside to a player who maybe would have been previously marked. And as a striker in literally every formation that I have it, get in behind and stay forward. So like I said, if you start this game literally at this second, you should be able to get this team within a week, a week and a half, two weeks tops. Or you could, I don't know, pack a player, thank the FIFA gods, sell it, and then build this team. But leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Gfinity channel if you want to see more tips and tricks off me on some FIFA stuff. We've got more advanced things coming up later and yeah don't forget to hashtag it